Most of the time, plants are actually moving water from the soil to the atmosphere. And depending on what the weather is like, the plants will kind of modify their behavior to do that more or less in order to be able to keep photosynthesizing and, and growing at the same time as they're releasing this water. Depending on how much rain there's been, depending on how cloudy it is, how hot it is, plants basically are more or less stressed and will behave differently. It turns out uh, that plants can also affect the weather. What's really at the core of this is that the sun blasts the earth with a lot of radiation every day that carries a lot of energy right in that sunlight. And that sunlight has to go somewhere and part of the places it goes is it, it goes back out. But then all of the energy that is not reflected back tends to go either towards heating the atmosphere, which will make it more turbulent and change the local dynamics and therefore change the weather, or it could go towards basically allowing the evaporation of the liquid water that's in the soil to the gaseous phase that is used to get that water back to the atmosphere. And it turns out that a major component um, of climate change and is sort of this interaction between changes in, in climate and changes in ecosystems. <laughs> process of evaporation takes up a really large fraction of how much energy is there from sunlight that's not reflected back. If you have a plant that's basically transpiring a lot, having a lot of this evaporation, it basically ends up hogging a lot of that energy that's coming in from the sun, and then there's less energy left over to, to do things like heat the atmosphere. These plants now get this water that's normally sort of safely locked away in the soil and they bring it back to the atmosphere where we can do things like form clouds and rain. In places where this is important, this can affect something like 30% of the weather and that's enough to do things like help you figure out how to do better sort of seasonal scale predictions. It also becomes really important when you have a heat wave or a drought, right, and people's lives are basically at stake, then these processes can often intensify. These processes and these interactions are happening everywhere, but almost everywhere they're happening in just a slightly different way because different things are more or less important in different places. And it's really that puzzle of how do we best quantify it um, that is now what we're working on. We know the, the processes, we, we think that it should be pretty easy to do, but actually getting that last step, getting our models better, is the part that's the most important and the part that's still not fully understood.